Hey everyone, I'm Anu. And I'm Nikita. You've probably been hearing a lot of buzz about large language models or LLMs. So we're here to show you how to take the flexibility and versatility of these models and use them in production applications on Google Cloud. Your machine learning on Google Cloud begins with Vertex AI. Vertex AI provides ML, tools, services, workflows, and infrastructure, all accessible through a simple and unified platform. Now, Vertex AI supports generative AI with two new products, Model Garden, which gives you access to Google's latest foundation models like Palm, and a variety of machine learning APIs that span text, image, code, and more. The other product is Generative AI Studio, which provides a simple interface to explore, prototype, and customize these generative AI models. Both of these together make it easy for developers to build with Generative AI. So let's dive in and check out Generative AI Studio, which lets you quickly explore and customize Generative AI models. Today, we'll be working with large language models. Then, we'll show you how you can leverage these models into your applications on Google Cloud, going from prototype to production in just a few steps. One of the many reasons people are so excited about generative AI right now is that it allows you to prototype applications really fast. With the right tools, you can experiment with new ideas in minutes instead of months. You can find Generative AI Studio in the Vertex AI section of the Cloud Console and select the type of content for your use case. To get started experimenting with large language models, click on New Prompt. In the world of Generative AI, a prompt is just a fancy name for the input text that you feed to your model. You can get one of these models to take on all sorts of different behaviors based on how you structure your prompt. This art and science of figuring out the best prompt for your use case is called prompt design, and it often involves a lot of experimentation. But that's where Generative AI Studio is here to help. So let's start with a freeform prompt. One way to design a prompt is to simply tell the model what you want. In other words, provide an instruction. For example, create an outline for an essay about hummingbirds. We click Submit and you can see that the model returns an essay outline. So let's try something a little more complicated. Here's a synopsis of a fictional TV show about a team of biologists working in a lab. This text snippet includes both the names of the characters as well as the actors that played them. We can instruct the model to extract the characters and the actors who played them from the above message. We send this text to the model and you can see that the model does in fact extract the characters and the corresponding actors that played them with a friendly note at the end. To make this information more structured, we can even instruct the model to create a table. We just need to modify the prompt a little bit. For an added challenge, let's extract the job that each character has in the show as well. We'll change the prompt to say, create a table and then provide the fields we're interested in, actor, character, and job. And this time, our model outputs a table with the information we requested. This approach, writing a single command to get the LLM to take on a certain behavior, is called zero-shot prompting. Now, for this use case, our model was able to complete the task with just an instruction. But depending on your use case, it can be helpful to provide some examples and show the model what you want. That's where few-shot prompting comes in. In this approach, you provide the model with a few examples. And to make it easier, you can use a structured prompt template in Generative AI Studio. The structured prompt contains a few different components. First, we have the context, which instructs how the model should respond. You can specify words the model can or cannot use, topics to focus on or avoid, or a particular response format. And the context applies each time you send a request to the model. So if we wanted to use a structured prompt for our use case, we'll need to add a synopsis as an example input. Let's use the same one from before. We'll need to also provide the corresponding output text in the format that we want the LLM to use. So let's say we wanna establish the text pattern, actor, character, job, so we can easily parse the output from the LLM and store the information in a database. Once we've added examples, we can test our prompt with a new summary. 
The snippet here is about another imaginary TV show and similarly contains the names of the main characters in the show, their jobs, and the actors who played them. When we click Submit, you can see that the model extracted the relevant information in the format that we wanted. It's important to note that adding instructions and a few examples tends to yield good results. But at the end of the day, there's currently no best way to write a prompt. Experimenting with prompts is a core part of being a generative AI developer. You'll want to try out different structures and formats and examples and see what works best for your use case and the specific model that you're working with. So when you have a prompt that you think is working pretty well, you can save it and return to it later. Your saved prompt will be visible in the prompt gallery, which is a curated collection of sample prompts that show how generative AI models can work for a variety of use cases. Finally, in addition to trying out different prompts and prompt structures, there are a few model parameters you can experiment with to try and improve the quality of responses. First, there are different models you can choose from. Each model is tuned to perform well on specific tasks. You can also specify the temperature, top P, and top K. These parameters all adjust the randomness of responses by controlling how the output tokens are selected. When you send a prompt to the model, it produces an array of probabilities over the words that could likely come next. And from this array, we need some strategy to decide what to return. A simple strategy might select the most likely word at every time step, but this method can result in uninteresting and sometimes repetitive answers. On the flip side, if we were to randomly sample over the distribution returned by the model, you might get some unlikely responses. By controlling the degree of randomness, you can get more unexpected, and some might even say creative, responses. How you set these parameters will depend on your use case. Lastly, if you want to explore additional customizations, you can tune one of the base models for your use case. First, you provide a model name. Then you point to the local or cloud storage location of your training data. Your training data should be structured as a supervised training data set in a text-to-text -text format. Each record or row in the data will contain the input text, in other words, the prompt, followed by the expected output of the model. After specifying the path to your data set, you can start the tuning job and monitor the status in the Cloud Console. When the tuning job completes, you'll see the tune model in the Vertex AI model registry. And you can deploy it to an endpoint for serving or test it out in Generative AI Studio. And there you have it. You've prototyped a data extraction and organization system in just a few minutes. Now, prototyping is great. But to really get the most out of your LLM is to integrate it into an app or automate a workflow. Large models on Vertex AI are ready for production use. Let's now see how we can scale what we did in the Generative AI Studio by using the API. Nikita was experimenting with prompts analyzing TV summaries because, let's say in our demo scenario, we run our own content platform and we work with creators to get their scripts into production a different type of production with actors and filming. We need a system where we can quickly process and store new files with key metadata, such as a synopsis of the shows they're working on, and we want to automatically extract the character names and actors and store this in a database. Let's take a look at how to use the API. If you select View Code, you can see the snippet you would need to use this LLM in your code. We're taking a look at Python today. This code snippet is handy because it shows us how to set up the client library and make the request. Let's take a look at the key parameters. We concatenate the prompt and the user input and pass through the parameters and we're ready to go. So that when we call the API, we get back a structured response and we can use the output to merge into a database schema. We're using BigQuery, a cloud relational database in this application. Our processing workflow can update the database every time a new summary comes in. Using some common Google Cloud components like our Google Cloud Storage, which stores our scripts, and Cloud Run, a serverless compute platform, we can create a processing architecture like this. The Cloud Run job takes a summary runs it through the LLM by calling the Vertex API, then stores the output data in BigQuery, 
using the BigQuery API. With Cloud Run, we can set up a trigger so whenever a new file is stored in the Google Cloud Storage bucket, the file is automatically passed to our Cloud Run job. Voila! Our BigQuery table is automatically populated and can easily be rendered in a web page or app so we can keep track of our scripts. That was our walkthrough of our cloud-based application that incorporates our LLM to get the maximum use out of it. There are several benefits to using large models on Google Cloud, such as state-of-the-art models Google maintains and upgrades for you. Privacy. My data is stored in my company's private, protected environment, and Google will only use it with my permission. By enterprise ready, we mean the models can be used out of the box so you can count on SLAs when you take your app to production to serve your users. In conclusion, Vertex Generative AI Studio helps you design and prototype with large language models. And with the power of cloud, you can elevate those experiments into production as a key component of your apps. Try your own prompts in the Generative AI Studio in the console and sign up for Google Cloud Innovators to stay in the loop with the latest updates.